Hi folks, it's Ash from Being Swinglish and here's a bit of a COVID update for Sweden. Now the weather here is getting really, really good. You can probably see my face is all sunburnt, having had an amazing weekend and even last night late into the sun. Basically, the way that Sweden is looking to move out of this whole COVID topic is by splitting their easing phases into five different periods. The first one commenced today, the 1st of June, and this is where Sweden will start to ease the restrictions that we've seen imposed that have really limited business and the commercial sector, retail sector, and just people and their lives in general. So Sweden is staging this over the next five to six months or so, but possibly longer. Some of these periods of time, of course, will extend. It may even be that this whole thing is scrapped altogether. It's all dependent on seeing a reduction in the figures and not seeing those figures rise. But at the moment, all is looking good here in Sweden. The, the Sweden's on a downward trend, especially if you look at the websites such as World Meters, which is a very well-respected statistical analysis website. And from the right outset of this pandemic has been great for looking at the, the progress and the, the change in figures between each country. In fact, if you look at it now, you'll notice it defaults to being sorted by the cases, which isn't really a good indicator because obviously America has a massive population, as does India. And so, of course, they're going to be at the top if you're listing it just purely by cases. So the best measure that I've been using is you sort the list by per deaths per capita, so deaths per million. That way you, you get a, a proper comparator. Now, you can compare cases between countries, but everyone's testing differently. And we don't know whether everyone's recording statistics in the, in the same way. You can't really dispute deaths as easily. People die and that's, that's it. Now, there are differences there as well, of course, because some countries will classify COVID death if they had COVID in the last three months, some in the last month, some maybe not at all. So maybe some statistics are lower in other countries than they actually should be. But glancing through that, sorted by deaths per million capita, you see that Hungary is at the top, which is quite odd, I think. You've then got Gibraltar, which is another odd entry right near the top of that list, but it could be to do with the age of the population. I don't know specifically for Gibraltar and Hungary, but um, Gibraltar is certainly one of those places that a lot of Brits go to retire. San Marino is in that list right at the top, and San Marino were actually at the top of that list for a long time. Tiny population, but a massive outbreak there, probably because it's a very small community and, I don't know, people are mingling closely and didn't really keep social distancing. Who knows? Scrolling down, you've then got the UK in 17th. Now, remember, the UK had multiple lockdowns, as did Spain, who's in 22nd, France in 23rd, and Portugal in 24th. They all had multiple lockdowns, massively affecting the, the retail and the commercial industry and people's lives. Scroll right down then to 33rd place, and there's Sweden, who have never had a lockdown imposed, were criticised by the entire world, and yet actually they're nowhere near the per death capita count of other countries which neighbour them. So I wonder if lessons learned, if things carry on on the downward trend in all of these countries, maybe we'll look back, maybe some of these countries will say, yeah, okay, Sweden didn't get it too badly after all. And it's also interesting that a lot of the countries are now imposing the same restrictions that Sweden have imposed all along. For example, the closing down of some types of uh, retail business and the restrictions around tables and the restri restrictions around closing times for bars and restaurants. But anyway, let's get back on to now what's going to happen from today. So today, restaurants and bars will be allowed open until 10.30. It's being increased from the current, which is 8.30. Um, alcohol must be stopped being served by 10. Tomorrow, at the moment, it's 8. Sorry, you finish your drinks in that half an hour and then you have to go. And I have to say, I was in an Italian restaurant last night and as we got to eight o'clock, I was really impressed at just how anxious the restaurant were. This was not a big chain restaurant. It was a small town Italian restaurant. You might think the type of restaurant that might think, oh, we can be a bit cheeky and be a bit, you know, be open a little bit later here. And ah, it's, who's really policing these rules? Well, no, they were rushing around to bring tables in from outside and to really get ready so that at 8.30, they were closed. They were, I also noticed a police presence around that time of night in the town, in the city. So I think the police are actually patrolling to look out for businesses that stay up late. So 
they are really, really policing it very, very well. Now, sadly, the four limitation of people at a table still applies. So you're only allowed four people at a table when you're sitting down, and there has to be at least one meter distance between each table. And finally on that, there's table service only. So when you walk into a bar, there's no standing at the bar. You have to basically sit down and wait to be served, which actually is quite nice. <laughs> Now, the other thing is zoos and even amusement parks can reopen, which is great news for summer. But they are subject to limited numbers. So, for example, Lisa Berg is one of the largest um, theme parks in the Nordics. Gigantic park. In fact, I think it's 170,000 square meters in size. But there is a rule for these parks, which is you're only allowed a maximum of one person per 20 square meters. So at 170,000 square meters that allows in theory up to 8,500 8, people in the park at any one time, which is more than enough, I would imagine. Uh, cinemas have generally always been open here. Some of them have closed, but some of them have been open. Me and Ellis went to see Aladdin about maybe six months ago, and there were four of us in the cinema. That was it. And they just said it, it's dead. They're struggling to stay open here. However, now they're allowed up to 50 people in the cinema at any one time, which is an increase. That hopefully means that new films will be coming as well. I am so desperate to see the new James Bond film, which has been postponed and postponed again and again. That, also, that rule also includes theatres and other indoor seated events. So any small gatherings which are a seated gathering are applicable to these rules, allowing up to 50 people, which is really, really good. Onto the bigger arenas like concerts and sporting events, up to 500 spectators are now allowed, which is great. That means that football is going to be back on with an audience. It means hopefully those brilliant indoor ice hockey matches will be back on. They are just amazing. If you've never seen ice hockey, go and watch it. I've never enjoyed watching a sport so much, actually. So that would be really nice. And for the smaller arenas, up to 100 people are allowed as well. And then just a final few minor things. Summer camps for kids will be open, which is nice, you know, for the kids to go away when the weather's really nice. And also universities will be allowed to organise on-campus training, which will be a massive relief for the hundreds of thousands of students whose education has been impacted by all of this pandemic. So it's looking good. That's phase one that kicks in today. From the 1st of July is phase two, where basically the only main difference is that these numbers all increase. So you, you'll see these step up a little bit. But this is great progress. It feels like we're heading back a little bit towards normality. The EU have also discussed and imposed a deadline on the 27 EU member states to have a COVID passport system in place. That was announced, I think, today. That is nice. However, I find that incredibly discriminatory because there are lots of us out there in the non-risk group who have not suffered, not been ill through this and that, you know, we've, we've been precautious and it's kind of forcing the hand of that group of people that haven't yet had the vaccine because they won't be able to travel until they've had it. Now, I've not been notified by the Swedish government yet. Sweden are doing a four-step vaccination program. I'm not risk group and I'm not old, so I will be one of, the, one of the last to be vaccinated. It could be late to this year. It might not even be till 2022. But this COVID passport system means that I wouldn't be able to travel to some countries in the EU until I've been vaccinated. That seems incredibly discriminatory and quite unfair. I don't know what's going to happen with this, but we will see. Anyway, my face is so sunburned after yesterday. I hope you guys find this video useful. If you do, uh, comment below, hit that thumbs up button and also share it because there'll be lots of people out there living in Sweden that don't know about these changes if they're not watching the news. So share it because hopefully this is useful and educational. And also hit that subscribe button below. Cheers guys, stay safe.